Hi, this is Nick06130601, and I'm coming at you guys with another video. Today I'll be speaking about a place known as Ford, Ontario. It's on the National Register of Historic Places, and this is going to be in the series just off that road. So Ford, Ontario is in the town of Oswego, New York, and it lies right off of Ford, Ontario. So as always, um, at, with larger significant sites, this video, I'm going to start with a history, and then I'll speak of what it's like visiting today. So the fort itself was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1970, though it, has, though it has a much older history. The fort was built by the British in 1755 during the French and Indian War, and within a year of that time, the fort was destroyed by the French. And then it was again built by the British in 1759. Now over the course of this fort's history, it seems like it was always under some form of attack and destroyed with the War of 1812 being no exception, and the British ironically attacked the fort in the new country that was the United States. So I could continue going over this history of being destroyed and being rebuilt, but if you're ever interested, just look it up, but the bottom line is, it happened plenty of times. It's strange to think that in during the time, so it's strange to think that the fort had already been operating for over 160 years prior to the start of World War I, but it was still being used during that time. It actually became the largest army hospital in the Northeast. And World War II also saw some action of the fort, though in a much more great of a scale. During World War II, refugees from the Holocaust were actually being sent to the fort in order to protect them from their countries and what was going on there. When we were there, there was actually a DVD playing in one of the rooms explaining how these refugees did and, and what their time was like there. Following the war though, there was debate as if these refugees should be able to stay, if they should be able to be citizens or not, though they were eventually allowed to do so. Now when we visited there, um, one of the most strange things I thought was the lack of visitors. When we first arrived, the parking lot was completely empty. I was shocked. I thought the fort was actually closed or there was renovations or because of the virus that it would not be operating. But when we got there, they, they took the money and they let us right in. I mean, they were, they were fully operational. And one of the weirdest things is we saw one of the group, it was a guy and his kids. And they were there for about the first 10 minutes we were there. They pretty much walked in right when we walked in, but were gone within 10 minutes. So they stuck around for about 10 minutes, including a gun demonstration by one of the reenactors, which I thought was awesome. So because there was such a lack of people visiting, I don't think they'd frequently do um, shows like that or displays, I mean, with the guns. But none nonetheless, uh, the reenactor actually showed us a gun. I believe it was from the Civil War period, but I'm not 100% sure. But he just, you know, he did exactly, he did the process of firing, what it was like. And it was, it was really interesting to see. I've seen them like that before, but with the lack of people and getting up close like that, it got a better perspective of what it was truly like. So there were multiple buildings on the property, and the one we entered first was to, directly to our right, and this is where the soldiers once slept and ate, and where they ate was referred to as the mess room. As cool as it is to see all these old artifacts, which these buildings are filled with, including weapons and uniforms and all sorts of stuff, the, one of the most interesting things I find is the pictures on the walls, because you get a better perspective of the faces of the people who were, who were here, and more importantly to me is just how old it is. I mean, I've emphasized this in multiple videos, but just saying these guys were young and, you know, it just seemed like another day, it, but clearly it's history now. It's strange to think that the year 1920 to them was the future, and that's 100 years ago for us. But anyways, um, when you enter the porch of the first building that I'm speaking of, you actually get a pretty nice view of the property, uh, Fort Ontario. You can see the kind of like the grassy field and also the few buildings. That's one nice thing about this this fort is it's pretty open, so you can always have a good idea of where you are. Not that there's really anywhere to get lost in. So the property itself does appear as if it's circular if you're just looking right from the the, the courtyard. But if you get an aerial view, you can see it's a much more uh, complex shape as far as how it was designed. Uh, the building, many of these buildings actually have a musty old smell, but I actually think that kind of odor seems, you know, right for that setting. It, it would seem weird not to, and I actually kind of like it just in general. It seems kind of, it almost brings you back to the way that uh, the fort should, should feel. One thing that's emphasized before you go to the top of the grassy hills is to check out all the buildings. But when you do get to these grassy the hills, which surround, again, the courtyard and the buildings, yeah, um, it, it's tr it's That's one of the most cool things to even to pay for. Even if you're not into history, just to get these views is, is something else. You can see all sorts of stuff, including obviously the fort, but you can easily see Lake Ontario. It's, it's a picturesque view, but you can see the town of Oswego and the factories that surround it. It's, it's crazy to look at. I mean, I thought it was so cool how we were in this historic fort and out in the distance were these giant uh, factories. And I think actually within... Um, Near, not too far was like a, a nuclear plant, but not 100% not sure. But as you walk around this grassy hill, 
you can actually um, go down into what's called, I'm going to butcher the word, but uh, an underground ambassador. I can't, I'm butchering it. Look it up. I'll, I'll put it on the screen. But and it, what it was is it allowed soldiers to shoot out of a, a, a wider uh, opening for them, but the enemy had a very thin opening to shoot back at, which is obviously a, a clever idea. I've seen it in other forts, uh, including uh, uh, Fort Niagara, as well as I think Fort Ticonderoga. I'll be making another video about that for my trip to the Adirondacks. And on top of the grass hill, there was a building called the penthouse, which was nearest to the lakeside. And what it was, it was a structure to cover the cannons uh, from the elements when uh, there was obviously nothing going on. And it could be taken apart very quickly when under attack. So after walking around the area for a while, we decided to sit down and just, you know, kind of appreciate the view that we had. And it, it was it was a fun, you know, there um, were such few people and no distractions, you just kind of just talk and, you know, it's, 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 it's definitely something for a family to do if you ever just want to kind of hang out in a quiet, again, even if you're not into history, that's what's so cool about many of these locations I've been trying to um, show you guys, like, like for Bolt Castle and um, for here at Ford Ontario, is the fact that you can appreciate these places even if you're not into history just for the, the architecture and the settings that they're in alone. So when you actually exit the fort, there's actually a lot to do as far as even if you're not planning on going in and spending the money. I think this is a, a state park, so there's obviously, you know, you can get access to it even if, you know, not solely for the fort. And there was a bunch of interesting structures and uh, signs outside the fort. There was one place or um, structure that was referred to as the... It was referred to as the Coastal Warning Tower. It's actually been standing for decades. You'll see there's a sign and it gives a whole history of it. So it's cool, like things that would appear insignificant, how, how the, this fort has managed to make uh, the history of it truly preserved. And again, one of the most interesting aspects to the fort itself to me was how old it had been. I'm gonna emphasize this, it seems like a million more times, but how old it was during World War One. That fort had already been standing for before, since, since before the United States was even a country. So that, that was something, um, Something definitely interesting to, to, to recall. Now what made this fort so great as a whole was with many locations as a result of the virus, the coronavirus, is that many aspects to the, many locations are closed off or they're partially open so you have to check the, their website and call and make sure they're, they're still operating. But this fort, it was about as normal as it could be, as, as, as operations could be. I mean, there was some some of the, I think the iPads that would otherwise have technology were, were off limits, but that was no big deal to anybody really. So as far as just getting the, the full experience, this was definitely um, fully fully worth worth the cost. I'm actually surprised it wasn't worth more with uh, what you can get and how uh, what, with what a cheap price it is. So again, this, um, this made a great trip. This was on the way, we visited this on the way to the Thousand Islands, which obviously included Bolt Castle, but it was a great road trip, great sights to see, um, quiet country roads. It definitely gets you away from, uh, make, it sets you back away from the news and all the chaos of 2020. So that was one thing that I've, I've loved about visiting all these locations this year. It's just, it, it's such a getaway as far as escaping the news and what, you know, the stresses of today can bring. So history, you know, the future is always can be uncertain, but you know, history is always, you know, it's set in stone, so there's nothing you can change about that. So had a great time. I hope you guys are getting a lot from these videos. I hope that it's kind of like a historical lesson as well as a travel guide for any memorable locations you want to go to uh, in the summer, even the winter. You know, I'll be making more of these videos in the winter. You know, I know I hate sitting still, so there'll definitely be more of these to come if you're enjoying these. Hopefully you're taking something away from it. Hopefully you've learned a little bit. Maybe you'll even visit one of these locations if if you ever want to, but definitely worth, uh, it was worth it to me. I'm so glad I did it. And one of the most fun things about these places is taking the pictures, you know, it's definitely helps, uh, you know, preserve the memory of what it's like to go to these places. And Fort Ontario is no exception. The town of Oswego is great, right next to the University of Oswego. So it was kind of set away, which is, that's what I love so much about this fort is it was set away. So there wasn't the chaos of the roads. I mean, it definitely seemed like the setting it was, they did a nice job preserving and keeping the, the area nice. Anyways, guys, I'm, I keep rambling on here, so I'm going to wrap it up. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.